G'day guys and gal, Warhammer 40k has no shortage of brutal deaths. Sometimes the writers will even go extra hard on a fan favorite character just to mess with us. As books also don't really seem to have like an age rating per se, some of these deaths go into excruciating detail, making you cringe by the imagined agony that these people are experiencing. But five deaths stand above the rest. Deaths so brutal and hardcore that you genuinely find yourself staring into space being like, bruh for a couple minutes. So I thought by sharing the five absolutely most brutal deaths with you guys, we could see how hard 40k truly is willing to go. Before we get started, it's now 2024. It's time to grow up. Being smelly and ungroomed just isn't a vibe and is something that needs to be left in 2023. So I've partnered up with Manscaped today to show you the performance package 5.0. Literally everything you need in one value pack to be the nicest smelling, most well-groomed version of yourself. The champion of this package is the Lawnmower 5.0. The 5.0 features an even closer shave while somehow being even more gentle on the skin. It also comes with a more reliable USB charger and doper, more functional LED lights for visibility, as well as more attachments for more versatility. This is on top of the already awesome features of the previous lawnmowers, such as being waterproof. That's just the start though. The package also features the Weed Whacker 2.0, a fantastic safe tool to keep those pesky nose and ear hairs trimmed. The package also comes with the Crop Preserver and Crop Soother Aftershave Lotion, amazing creams that ensure you remain razor bump free, or if you're having issues with Stanky Wiener, it can completely get rid of that. To tie it all together, you also get a free pair of boxes and a sturdy, classy travel bag. When you get this kit instead of the individual items, you're already saving 45%. But then by using my link and code MAJIGAL below, you will shave off an additional 20%, as well as getting free international shipping. That deal applies store-wide. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the five most brutal deaths in 40k, not just via how hardcore the writer went, but also in regards to the circumstances and context of the death. After all, if some random dude gets mega killed, it doesn't hit that hard if he's only been around for two chapters. Now let's get into it. This first death wasn't super impactful per se, nor did it happen to a fan favorite character, but it is so over the top and ridiculously brutal and hardcore that it would be remiss of me not to mention it. That being the death of Kurosan, a captain of the Sons of Horus. When the heresy ended, the traitor legions all fled to the Eye of Terror and basically begun civil warring their own tits off as a way to try cope with their humiliation and to also become the dominant traitor force. The Sons of Horus were especially targeted due to them being blamed for the heresy and the subsequent shit situation all the traitors found themselves in. To rectify this and also somewhat unite the traitor legions, Abaddon created the Black Legion using a huge chunk of Sons of Horus, but also allowing any traitor from any legion to join as well. Abaddon didn't expect or demand the other legions to join the Black Legion, however he did demand that all Sons of Horus flock to his banner. Some did not want to though, including Kurosan. Kurosan had become quite powerful. He had been heavily mutated and enhanced by Chaos and he had his own small army and planet. When Abaddon came knocking to secure his allegiance, he told Abaddon to go fuck off and die, hence Abaddon had to make example of him. The Black Legion viciously attacked Kurosan's planet, slaughtering his warriors and taking him prisoner. Instead of a simple execution, Abaddon wished to totally break and humiliate Kurosan, so he gave him to his elite terminators who proceeded to crucify and impale Kurosan on their battle standard while he was still alive and carry him around like a fucking festival doof stick. They kept him alive by intravenously feeding him the vomit and shit of their legion slaves. Plus, due to his warp mutations, Kurosan was significantly more durable. The dude was alive for five months of absolute agony before for eventually dying. That would have been fucking horrific and probably the most brutal death in the entire setting. However, as nobody gave a fuck about Kurosan, I'm only having it as fifth on this list. The next brutal death is that of Bekwa Kinska, one of the most famous musicians in the entire Imperium. During the Great Crusade, the Emperor decreed that at this time of epicness, shit should get recorded. Hence, thousands of artists, poets, musicians, and whatnot were sent out to join the various fleets to record the legends of the Primarchs and Space Marines. The Emperor's children, known for their love of art, received some of the most talented and famous remembrances in the Imperium, one of which was the legendary Bekwa. She was a very extra woman who was also mega horny, banging at everyone she could no matter their gender. I'm sure you can see where this is going. When Slanesh started to tickle the Legion's balls, Bekwa was inspired to create her magnum opus, her finest song ever, and while it probably sounded great to everyone who was listening to it, it was overall probably dog shit and very random. However, due to the emotion poured into it alongside Bekwa creating new instruments based on the ones that the Leia used, she was able to summon a bunch of Slaneshi demons while driving the audience into a state of orgasmic frenzy. All of her co-performers were either possessed by demons, which killed them, or were then torn apart by the demons summoned, which, you know, also killed them. The space rings in the crowd went insane, ripping their mortal crewmates to shreds or eating them or flaying them with their hands and wearing their flesh as fashion accessories. However, all of this pales to Bekwa's death. 
As she was the epicenter of the carnage, she suffered the worst. She was puppeted by Slanesh and forced to move and dance in impossible ways, ways a mortal never should. Her bones popped and cracked, her joints dislocated, her muscles were shredded, and eventually even her bones were crushed into powder. But onward she danced. At some point during this horrific contortion, she died, her soul then getting devoured by thirsting demons. It wasn't the worst death there is, however her performance is what really poisoned the Legion's soul and drove the Empress' children towards Slanesh's embrace, so there was a lot of significance to it. This next vicious death really takes you off guard and feels very mean-spirited, but I actually really like how it was written and how twisted it really was. That being the death of Carl Thonius. Carl Thonius was an interrogator for Inquisitor Gideon Ravenor, one of the most legendary inquisitors to ever live. Interrogators basically been inquisitors in training. He was a charming good man, very extra as he wore dozens of rings, but he was brilliant and loyal, a good man. However, after taking a low-key chaos corrupted drug, he was subtly possessed by one of the most powerful demons to ever exist. The possession was very insidious and secretive. The demon had to slowly charge up its power, hence wanted to keep its presence hidden. So Carl went about his day without even realizing something was wrong. It actually got to a point where Carl started manifesting demonic powers, however had enough control to use them for good, saving the lives of his friends and even stopping the plot of a bad guy. It actually seemed like Carl's good nature and will was keeping the demon in check. However, the demon had just been fucking with Carl. It was in control the entire time and could have killed him or dominated him at a moment's notice. When Carl is kidnapped by the bad guys to allow for the demon to finally manifest, it is seriously the worst shit ever. The demon begins slowly manifesting, putting Carl in massive agony. Carl is holding it back though, or at least he thinks he's holding it back, due to his willpower and hope that Gideon will save him. When he hears that Gideon is on the way, he feels a surge of hope that seemingly pushes the demon down, but then the demon simply laughs and overloads Carl, causing his hands to turn into claws and popping his rings in the process. Blood spurts out of Carl's eyes, mouth and ears, his legs begin to violently seizure, his eardrums explode and his eyes boil and melt in their own sockets. He bites his own tongue off and screams a gurgle of agony through the blood. The worst part is that the book simply then says, this would be the last hour of Carl Thonius's human existence, it would be the most miserable and ghastly 60 minutes anyone would ever endure, implying that all the fucked up shit I just mentioned that occurred to him in the first 30 seconds of the demon's manifestation was simply the entree to the true agony of his death. Overall, Carl had a very, very very, very bad time, made by the fact that all the books pointed towards Carl maybe being able to overcome the demon. Now onto the second most brutal death in 40k. We knew this one would be on the list, but we didn't know where it would be, that being the death of Sanguinius at the hands of Horus. Everyone knew this was coming. Established lore has Horus killing Sanguinius for the past 20 odd years. But we wanted to believe, hope beyond hope, that something would change, that GW would retcon it. We had all grown attached to Sanguinius and after him killing Angron, Kabunda and Loki soloing the entire Might of Chaos for a little while, he seemed unstoppable. But not only did GW keep Sanguinius' death, but they made it brutal as fuck. Firstly, they had Horus depowered in his normal Primarch state to give him and Sanguinius a fair brother to brother fight. They even allowed Sanguinius to win this fight, despite how wounded he was from Angron and how strong Horus was. It literally answered the question, who was the most powerful Primarch and the answer was Sanguinius, but then Horus activated creative mode and gained the power of a god. It literally then says, Sanguinius charged at the speed of light, but Horus moved at the speed of darkness. Horus breaks Sangi's wings and then starts beating the shit out of him with Worldbreaker. The author literally says he beats him like a disobedient dog. Sangi's lungs collapse, the skin on his face gets half torn off, hanging off like a skin mask and there's blood everywhere. Sanguinius can't even get his last words out as he chokes on all the blood in his lungs before Horus then picks him up and snaps his spine and neck with a vicious crunch. Then to add insult to the injury, demons pour out of the shadows and string Sanguinius's corpse up so that the Emperor will see one of his true sons broken and destroyed. It was brutal as fuck and I am all here for it. It was the most undignified end for the most dignified character. However, that still doesn't quite match the brutality of this next and final death, the death of Raven Divine. This is going to be a bit convoluted, but trust me, you'll be in awe of the sad irony and brutality of this death, a true testament to the writers of Warhammer books. Raven was a massive prick. He was the son of the leader of House Divine, the ruling family of the world of Molech a key imperial world that Horus was keen to take during the Horus Heresy. Raven was that dashing, arrogant and charismatic kind of guy, strong-willed and cruel. He also fucked his sister who used to be engaged to his half-brother. Raven was also a knight, a pilot of the legendary war mechs of the Imperium. His brother Albard was supposed to be the heir to Molech, but during his bonding experience with his knight, he was sabotaged by the agents of chaos which left him crippled. Then Raven's mother began subtly poisoning Albard to keep him in a near vegetative state, paving the way for Raven's ascension. So with 
Raven been such a prick, you would think that his death would be justified. After all, it happened because Albard was able to resist the poison, reclaim his mind, kill his bitch ass stepmother, and then was able to capture Raven, Raven's sister slash fuck buddy, and Raven's kids, before killing them one by one in front of Raven, before then killing Raven as well. A brutal death, but seemingly deserved. Albard then took command of the defenses of Moloch against Horus. You'd think that this would be a good thing. Albard was always more of the noble knight to Raven's dashing rogue. But no. See, Raven was a massive prick, but he was loyal to Molek, the Emperor and his own ego. He wouldn't fall to Chaos or betray the Emperor because that was cringe and lame. I mean, he literally got lured to Fulgrim's demon form, and then when Fulgrim tried to corrupt him, Raven said, Fuck you, nerd, and Turbo blasted him with laser beams before running away. He literally was faced with war corruption and told it to eat his dick. He was also quite effectively leading the defense of Molek, even once almost killing Horus in battle, with Horus only surviving due to bullshit Chaos hacks. Albard, on the other hand, despite his surge of will, was still mentally broken. During the final battle for Molek, the Imperials pulled out an Imperator-class Titan, which was turning the tide of battle in favor of the Loyalists. Albard was preparing his knights to charge the enemy when Slaanesh's influence took a shot at Albard. He was so mentally weak at that point that when Slaanesh offered him a chance for glory and a renewed youthful body, he accepted it, creating a chain reaction which then corrupted the rest of the Knights of House Divine. They then rode forth and attacked the Imperator Titan from behind within its shielding, causing its death and losing the war for the Imperials. The brutal part about this is that by the noble, wronged son Albard taking vengeance against his asshole brother Raven, he doomed his soul and his world. The death of Raven itself was pretty brutal, but the fact that letting the prick win and keeping Albard locked away would have been the best result. The brutalness comes from the irony that Raven's actions were almost justified and that him being the bad guy was the best thing for the people of Molek. I hope that makes sense because in my head it's fucking awesome. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel then subscribe. Half of you sexy motherfuckers that watch aren't actually subbed which is something you could rectify with a flick of a dick and a slap of a button. Dick flipping is optional. Join the discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.